Hello everyone! We have already learned how to get the slope from a graph from a previous video, and also how to determine the slope from two points. Today we will look at the slope-intercept form of an equation. Let's just take a moment to review what the slope is. Remember, it's the rise over the run. This is the slope-intercept form of an equation. Notice on the left we have the y term, then we have the x term. This m represents the slope, which is the rise over the run, and this b represents the y-intercept. This is the point on the y-axis where the line will cross. In the past, you may have used an input and output chart and taken the ordered pairs generated to draw a line. Suppose that our first x value is 0. We would substitute it into the equation. We would multiply 2 times 0 and get 0, then add 2, and so our y value would be 2. Suppose that our next x value is 1, we would substitute it into the equation, multiply 2 times 1 and get 2, then add 2, and so our y value would be 4. And if our x value were 2, we would substitute it into the equation, multiply 2 times 2 to get 4, then add 2, and we would get 6 as our y value. This exercise using the input-output chart shows us why the x is called the independent variable, because its values are independent of anything that we do. Yet the y values are called the dependent variable because they depend on the x values that we choose. However, if we are given an equation in the slope-intercept form, there's a much easier way of drawing a line. We can see on the right that we have 2 as our y-intercept, and this is the point at which the line will cross the y-axis. So we will place our first point there. Then, in front of x we have 2, this is the slope. It is actually 2 over 1, so we have a rise of 2, and a run of 1. So from our first point we will rise 2 and run 1 and place our second point. Then we will rise 2 and then run 1 and place our third point. Then we will draw our line. Now if we were to take our input and output chart from before and look at the ordered pairs that we generated, we would see that they are the same points that we just plotted. 0 and 2 is here, that's our first point. 1 and 4 is our second point. And 2 and 6 is our third point. They are exactly the same. As you can see, using the slope-intercept form helps us draw lines very quickly. By using the input and output chart and the slope-intercept form of an equation, we drew a line with three points. But we could draw more. Let me show you. We started off at point 0 and 2, and then we rose 2 and ran 1, rose 2 and ran 1, like stairs, but we could go backwards as well, like stairs. So I could go back 1 and down 2 and place a point, and back 1 and down 2 and place another point, just like they're stairs. We could keep on going in both directions, that's why we draw the arrows to show this but it's okay if we just draw a few points. We could even draw a line with just two, but drawing several helps us sketch the slope of the line better. And here we have a line through all of these points. Now we will draw our next line, and we see that the y-intercept is positive four, so our first point to plot will be four on the y-axis, and we see that our slope is two. So we're going to place our first point at positive 4, and we're going to rise 2 and run 1 and place another point. But we see we've run out of room, but that's okay. We can go down the stairs as well. So we can go back 1 and down 2, back 1 and down 2 and place another point, 
back one and down two and place our last point. And we can draw our line through all the points and place our arrows and we're done. We're going to draw our next line and as we look at it, we see that there is no y-intercept. Well, there's nothing. When there's nothing, there's zero. So that means we're going to start drawing our line at zero on the y-axis. The slope is two. So I'm going to start at the origin, or zero on the y-axis, and place a point, and then rise two, and then run one, place a point, rise two, run one, place another point, rise two, and run one, and place another point. I can also go backwards from the origin, back one, and down two, like stairs, and place my last point. So we'll draw a line through all these points and place our arrows. You can notice something when we have the same slope in several lines, but different y-intercepts. That's because lines with the same slope but different y-intercept are parallel. Now we're going to write an equation in slope-intercept form if the y-intercept is negative 5 and the slope is negative 2 thirds. Now we're going to write an equation in slope-intercept form if the y-intercept is negative 5 and the slope is negative 2 thirds. Remember, we need to use the slope-intercept form of the equation. So we have the y, the equal sign, the x. These parts are fixed in the slope-intercept form. We have the negative 2 thirds, which is the slope. We place it where m is, which is right in front of the x. Then we have the y-intercept which is negative 5, and we're going to place it wherever we see b. And now we have our equation written in slope-intercept form. We can graph this equation now. The y-intercept is negative 5, so I will place my first point at negative 5, then I will go down 2 and run 3 and place my next point. I see I'm running out of room. So I can do the stair thing. I can go backwards. So I can go back three and up two, place a point, back three, and up two, and place a point, then draw my line, and place the arrows, and we're finished. Subscribe to my channel to get updates on new videos, and if you'd like me to create more, like and share with someone who might find this helpful. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.